might have seen these recommendations in various other e-commerce websites, Netflix, Amazon, Flipkart. So basically these recommendations are provided to cross-sell products and upsell them, basically horizontally and vertically. So within the same vertical, let's say if you are viewing a particular uh, moisturizer, what other things could you suggest within that same vertical? Whereas cross-sell could be, let's say if you're looking at a jeans pant, maybe a t-shirt could go along with it or stuff like that. So hope you recognize these screenshots because my talk will be building upon this. Yeah, so now I'd like to briefly explain upon how collaborative filtering and uh, recommendations in general work. Uh, just a short introduction. So let's say you have this person here who's let's say interested or bought these two items. Whereas this person has bought those, th those three items. So when this kind of pattern occurs sufficiently in your data, you could probably correlate that maybe this Coke is somehow related to these two items. In a way, that's how most uh, collaborative filtering algorithms work. Okay. Oh, okay, sure. So yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so when I said, uh, yeah, so this Coke is now kind of correlated saying that it could probably be related to these two items. So the beauty of this approach is, you don't need to know what a pizza is, you don't need to know what a salad is. Uh, all you need to look in your data is where, how many times this kind of correlation is occurring, right? So that kind of tells you that people are sort of interested in this. You don't know what that is. All you know is it is important, so right? So this has a lot of advantages as you realize. You don't need to know any semantics of the items, but the disadvantages are also there. I'll probably, if there's enough time, I'll come to that. So yeah, this is well and good, but the, the, the problem that happens is when you plot, let's say, if you say, if you take all our Flipkart products, 15, 20 million products and plot it in a graph saying what are the act activities happening on each product? Activities, let's say, uh, selling, how many products are selling and how many products are, uh, whatever, the number of times a product is sold, right? If you plot it in a graph, you would kind of get something close to like this. This is, most of you might know, this is a long tail kind of graph, it's a power law. What this basically says is, in, uh, in your catalog, 20% of your products are, 20% of your products are very popular, approximately. Whereas the other 80% are not that popular. So what I mean by popular is, again, internal thresholds and stuff like that. So when, uh, when you're saying 20% are popular, you are able to provide good recommendations for them because you have enough data around those products. So when you have good data around those products, good, uh, let's say a lot of people are buying a mobile phone with a case cover. So that could give you a good correlation between those two items. Whereas something along here, if not many people are buying it, you have no way to say what this particular thing is related to. Right? So when you have close to 80% of your catalog falling in this long tail, and hence not good recommendations coming in, that is a problem that you'd like to address, right? So this is what we call a sparsity problem because not enough data is there around those products to solve, uh, to, to give recommendations basically, right? So my, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is how we have tried to solve this sparsity problem, here, right? Whereas this long tail, I'm not going to touch even, I mean, not at the start because the, uh, here anyway, we're getting good, good recommendations. J this particular thing is what needs to be addressed. So yeah, so okay. So this is a brief solution from a very high level. So let's say you have uh, in your catalog, it could not necessarily be an e-commerce catalog. It could be a Netflix movie catalog, whatever, right? So you have this, some root movies and then you could probably have something drama and sub. So here, let's say there's a category tree that we have in Flipkart. So you would ha probably have a root node and then so on and so forth. And here you will have shoes. And then it furly, further gets categorized into running shoes and casual shoes and so on and so forth. These would be the leaf nodes, right? So what I'm saying, uh, what this approach is trying to say is, a lot of good activities happening around this canvas shoe. So whereas not much around this non-popular shoe, not many people are interested in it, right? So what I'll be doing, this technique,
tries to leverage the good activity around this and try to recommend stuff for this. That's a solution at a very high level. So how this happens, we'll get to know as I come to the demo section. So this is briefly the approach uh, that we have uh, developed. First is form a cluster of products. And after uh, forming the cluster of products, we do co-current analysis on this. And finally, try to leverage the affinities that we formed. Uh, normally, this approach is done at a PID level, at an individual product level. But uh, doing at an individual product level, again, uh, because of that long tail phenomena, what you end up ha having is not good recommendations or not enough data to give recommendations. Right. Uh, so yeah, these are some of the examples that uh, before I tell what, how we've developed this product cluster, I just like to give a few examples of what this cluster is. Right. So this is one cluster about mobile phones, one about garments and baby products. What this cluster is made up of is, it's made up of all Motorola Android phones within this price range. Whereas this is a garment with these uh, attributes, uh, and same with baby products, right? So a baby product might have an attribute of zero to three months brand and price range. What, uh, so what's the big deal about this, right? So, uh, so a particular product in this particular category might have uh, 30, 40 attributes. So a pant might have number of pockets, type of zipper, uh, uh, what is the, is it, a, is it a metallic zipper or plastic zipper, a lot of other attributes, right? How do you know which attribute is important and which is not? Whether, how do you know brand is important and a number of pockets is not important? Uh, so why do you need this? So if you, let's say, form a cluster with a very loose attribute, let's say number of pockets, the number of products that map to that cluster will be very less. And moreover, when you're actually trying to show this to a user, how many of users would like to buy, would differentiate between products which are two uh, pockets and three pockets? It, it doesn't, it's not, not many people will be interested in that kind of a products and cluster. So trying to find an important set of clusters, uh, important set of attributes to form the cluster is very important. So the way that we have approached this is, of course there are other uh, data mining approaches, uh, not, not data mining, sorry, uh, machine learning approaches wherein you will find uh, how to attribute a weight to a particular attribute. Uh, like for books, if you say, uh, there are thousands of attributes, right? So uh, maybe you have, uh, uh, what do you call, publisher, uh, book type, paperback, so on and so forth. But author is one of the most important attributes there. So, so yeah, so how do we know what attributes to choose? So the way that we've uh, approached this is, uh, we try to, uh, we looked at the click logs that we get at Flipkart and try to see what people are clicking and what and what they end up going to after that. So for example, uh, this is one entry of a log line. This is, I've kind of truncated it because it was too big to fit in this slide. So th this particular person from this IP was looking at some Apple product and he was viewing it basically. He was viewing it and this is the product ID of it. So after, so he came to this particular page after selecting certain filters and searching on the Flipkart website. So we try to track this entire route and what and what filters he ended up choosing which led to this final result is what we kind of note down. So this kind of, when you analyze the logs over a period of time, this roughly tells you what attributes uh, customers are thinking are important, important to them. So as an example, let me give you this, right? So this particular thing, what this, if you see on Flipkart website, right? So you will see on the left side various way to uh, filter your uh, search results or filter your uh, browsing, right? So in tablets, you will see brand as a top uh, section here, price as a second, screen size as third. So this is not randomly placed. This is arranged based on what users are thinking that particular section is important or not to them. So for tablets, people seem to be more interested in brands as opposed to, let's say, accessories. Whereas for trousers, it is like size first and then brand later on. Whereas for t-shirts, uh, brand is first and color seems to be more predominantly important. So this kind of tells you what is, uh, so we have crowdsourced this whole, whole thing of uh, determining what is a good attribute or not. So I think this gives you a better approach 
rather uh, in, instead of using machine learning techniques because um, this kind of uh, can take care of any trends that can happen later on. Let us say after a while uh, due to some reason this tablet accessories are leading to more importance in customer behavior. This will naturally bubble up. So that is what you would want because uh, machine learning might not catch those small subtleties. Okay, cool. So I will have to talk a little bit of math because uh, till here what we have is just clusters floating around. Uh, we do not have any linkages or no affinity between clusters as of now. They are just like clusters just floating around and no connection as of now. So the way we do it is, um, so the way, so e, okay, so each uh, cluster is uh, plotted as a vector in a n dimensional space. So here you are seeing a two dimensional space. So let us say this D3 is one vector, D2 is one vector and so on and let us say there is only two clusters right now. So now how do you know, how do we find out what is the distance between this and this, right? So the way that we approach this, we used a cosine similarity. So what that tells you is the dot product of these two vectors. It is a uh, angle between these two uh, vectors. So of course in, in our data, we did not have just two vectors. We had n, n vectors. Uh, so why is this important? So there are other, so if you remember your geometry lessons, there is Manhattan distance wherein you have this uh, distance between two points in a two dimensional plane and stuff like that, right? So Manhattan distance is one more thing that we tried, but what was happening with those other measures was, uh, if let's say certain cluster like mobile phones, which are very popular at Flipkart, so they, they are bought almost with all other products. So what happens is mobile phones will come almost with every other cluster. You don't want this kind of behavior because you would want the customer, so if I show genes spanned with mobile phone, there is no value in it. I can of course say data is showing it, but then you would want to show him something good. Right? So cosine similarity gives you a, a normalized uh, normalization because in the denominator you have a normalization factor here. So this takes care of, this becomes length invariant. So the length of a vector kind of is in, uh, not, not a factor. So this gives you a this gives you a score, <coughs> sorry, yeah. So this gives you a score between uh, let us say this D3 vector and D2 vector. So that score kind of is a indicator of how close they are, right? So now, uh, so I, I need to mention some numbers because unless this is mentioned, it is not, you cannot know this that this approach is scalable or not because you can do this on a small set of data, but then Flipkart scale, if you have to do it, it has to be uh, scalable, right? So this approach currently generates about a billion item sets. That is after our thresholding that we put in. Thresholding by thresholding, I mean we have various checks to see if it is not a bulk order or not. So if someone orders like 50 bags and 50, you know, um, pants, that, that should not screw my data up. So we have certain thresholding defined in our data. So which neglects all such errors. So this is after those thresholding a billion item sets. So finally we end up generating about 60,000 clusters. Um, so for our catalog of about 20 million products, uh, this approach covers about 99.4 percent of our catalog. Okay. So this kind of, if you see this percentage, this and if you remember the earlier slide about long tail, this tells you that this has a very good coverage. But of course I like to make a point here. Coverage need not necessarily mean good quality. Right. So, uh, for example, uh, at least recommendations is far more forgiving that way, because search results when you type in something, if I show, uh, if you if you type in Adidas, you'd want to see something regarding Adidas. You can't be too experimental there. Whereas in recommendations, at least have a little bit of leeway. But that need not necessarily mean I can show him any random thing, right? But still, uh, again, this coverage does not necessarily mean quality. So what data did we consider to generate these clusters? Uh, so we generated uh, clusters using all the sales and browse data. So this accounted to about 300 million entries, I mean as an input to our algorithm. So that's it about uh, various numbers. So coming to examples, so internally after, let's say uh, this is one cluster of baby walkers. 
those small workers, right? So after I compute the cosine similarity, I'll get uh, let's say this kind of a graph that I, that we represent internally. Uh, baby bouncers seem to be more predominantly linked with this, whereas potty seeds seems to be next, uh, strollers is next, and so on and so forth. So if you see these kind of clusters are kind of complementary in a way to the uh, main cluster here. Complementary, I mean, when someone is buying a baby walker, you are not only suggesting other types of baby walkers, but you are also suggesting complementary items like uh, baby walkers might mean he has a baby and maybe baby soaps could also be helpful to him or baby wipes, so on and so forth, right? So all of these are related to baby uh, usage, right? So, but uh, inside Flipkart, we represent this in a console in this way. Uh, same thing actually, what you saw, baby bouncers here and so on and so forth. So first is baby bouncer and, so this tells you a lot more information because uh, this cluster is made up of these attributes Mother touch is a brand and price range. Uh, so, so again, this not only tells you about the cluster. So, the significance of this is this tells you all the products with these attributes have an affinity towards all the products with these attributes. Whereas all the products of these attributes. So, it's not just one product that we are talking about. Yeah. Right. So, I'll just give you this example because this is very uh, important to wrap up the talk. Uh, so I think I'm out of time, but yeah. So this was a product that was recently released in Flipkart website. So as a result of this, uh, we did not have any recommendations. It was newly released. So uh, you will just see, within a day or two, you will just see this, which is just a very loose recommendation. Right? So when you uh, put the same product ID in the console, uh, the heels, shoes, pavers, England, you would see some good stuff. Uh, handbags, women tops, wallets, wristwatches. So how did we get to this? Because when you see at the bottom, so this particular uh, product fell in a cluster where other products had already been bought and uh, had activity around it. So for example, if you see this guy here, there's some three ratings and I'm pretty sure it's been bought. Whereas this guy here, so people have done some uh, co uh, buying other stuff with this sandal and stuff, uh, sandal, right? So that helped us leverage the recommendations that are f getting formed here to show it for this guy. Right. So, so this is kind of a mock-up. It's still not there on the web website, but ultimately we are hoping that uh, product groups, uh, sorry, internally we actually call it product groups, but yeah, for the presentation it was re-termed as product cluster. So don't get confused with this here. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so this is the final thing that hopefully it will emerge on the website, wherein if let's say you are seeing this, you will see what are the other complementary groups that you uh, could see, you know, kurtas, uh, watches, handbags, that kind of acts as an accessory to this. Uh, what are the other synonyms? I have not yet talked about synonyms actually. So complementary is one thing, but synonym also is important because you like to see other varieties of the same type. So yeah. This is, uh, so this is what we've actually done to uh, handle the sparsity problem and recommendations. So we're doing a lot of other cool things, but yeah, that's, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Shrikar. Um,